degenerate game 3.1 and I'm sorry but I think this is going to be a video where I need to talk a little bit um, rather than just do text scrolling across the screen. Uh, this is really degenerate game 3.1 I would say. There's a degenerate game 3 in the Zebu factory pack that this is based on and the big thing that differentiates that from version 2 is that any of the CV inputs from Zebu can be routed to any of the mod sources uh, or, or mod destinations. Um, and I wanted to create a version that was like that uh, for Zoya that was modulation rich. So what I've done is created a number of mod sources that are built into the patch that can be sent to any of the sources and you can mix and match uh, as you want. Um, I'm going to real quickly go through the controls, just the basic controls without any modulation. Um, so WOW is a sort of a... Let me turn down the flutter a little bit and turn up the gin a little bit. Uh, wow is a randomized modulation. Um, as you turn it up, it becomes deeper and faster. If we mix this in with our dry volume, we can get some really nice chorusing. That goes with anything in the patch. I'm not going to keep showing how it sounds with dry volume mixed in, but you know, if you really mangle up a sound, you can use the dry volume as a way to sort of bring back in some definition too. Um, Flutter is uh, sort of an audio rate vibrato, or more like an audio rate vibrato. It goes very fast. I actually reworked this in two different ways uh, from the original because I just never liked it that much. So this one does two things. Uh, in the normal mode, as you increase the flutter, it speeds up and becomes more intense. So if we listen to it here, it'll sound different than if we listen to it here. It's a subtle uh, element, but it, it gives you more versatility, I think, out of this control. We can also replace the vibrato with a noise vibrato if we press this noise flutter button down here. And this has more of a shoot up sound. So we have more options with the flutter control. In, in that case, this just acts as a depth control. So it allows you to dial in the intensity. Uh, and one thing I should point out about the wow control, I'll come back to it when we talk about modulation. Volume is pretty straightforward, unlike in the CBA version the wet level can be modulated in the CBA version. Uh, that control was used to set the, the ramp uh, speed. So here we can do that separately and that allows for some nice vibrato tremolo sounds. Uh, Gen is an aliaser and it reduces the sample rate. Right down to real grudgy, grungy stuff. Um, the high pass filter removes low frequencies.
and the, hot, the low pass filter removes high frequencies. And the two create a bandpass filter, but because you can modulate each separately, you can produce a lot of interesting controls. And one difference between this version and V2 is that I took the resonance control um, out from sort of hidden in the patch and I made it variable. It's not like you can't get super resonant, but at 0.5 is about where resonance was set in the previous version and I think pretty close to the resonance in the original pedal. Um, then you can dial it back for a less resonant sound. So again, it's not like a radical transformation thing, but it's a nice tool to shape the tone that you want. Uh, and I should say that the flutter, when it's at about 500 per, uh, point 0.5, uh, is pretty close to what I had in the previous uh, Degenerate Gain uh, patches for um, Flutter. So the idea was to add new features while also making it possible to go back to the original sounds. Uh, and then finally, there, not finally, there's one more. Uh, I have this corrosion control, which is an inclusion of my own. What it does is sort of audio rate, noise modulated uh, amplitude. So it's sort of like a noise tremolo. As you push it up more, it's sort of like a tape has been demagnetized or something. You start having dropouts, that sort of thing, as it gets really high. Uh, I really like that. I think it adds a, a whole dimension of lo-fi-ness that's often overlooked um, in lo-fi pedals and, and whatnot. Is There's a, an element of audio uh, amplitude variation. Uh, there's the dry volume we've already been over. And then there's the noise level. This actually sets the sort of depth of whatever modulation is sent to noise. Right now it's on the envelope follower. And we can switch between white noise, which it's on now, and uh, pink noise, which is really a sort of audio rate modulated uh, noise which comes from the uh, flutter control. So depending on what flutter is set to, if it's set to noise or it's normal, the pink noise will sound a little different. But the difference I think is pretty subtle. Okay, so now on to all this other stuff. And what this really is, is just uh, a modulation matrix. So each of these controls has a mod on off button, which I like because it's just an easy way to, to really change up a sound. Um, and then they have a bipolar depth control and this is set up in the same way as sort of like a CBA pedal, but it's more variable. So um, using internal feedback, the highest depth will reach the top point of that control and no further. It won't clip at the top or anything like that. It's uh, built around that feedback so it knows uh, how much to modulate a, a destination. Um, and you can do positive or negative depth for, for either any of the controls. So a positive depth will modulate toward the maximum amount that that control can be set to, and a negative 
depth will modulate toward the minimum amount. Um, and I'm just going to show off uh, a really good way to show off is with uh, the volume because we hear tremolo pretty easily. So there are a number of different mod destinations. The green is a looped envelope uh, that has a variable shape. So it can go from, well, I'll just play it. It can go from more triangle-like. to sawtooth to ramp and anywhere in between. Uh, it's able to be controlled by tap tempo or you can set the rate and you might have noticed me changing it from a positive rate value to a negative rate value and when it's in negative rate those shapes are passed through a multiplier and become exponential so instead of having um, like a ramp, we have sort of an ex exponential up. And we have sort of a half moon shape uh, when it's more in the middle toward the triangle side and then an exponential down for the sawtooth. Uh, and, and in either rate system, you can set tap tempo. Or if you change the rate, you can set it manually. And part of the reason I wanted the manual option is because we can do really fun stuff when we set the rate really fast. ring mod territory. That's also pretty fun when you use it to modulate say a filter. Okay. So back to uh, modulating the, the volume. The next is a square wave, and again, the square wave can be set by tap tempo. Uh, that'll set both of these, but you can move either of them off the tap tempo because they have their own separate rate or speed controls. So we can also set this by uh, hand. We have a random, uh, which is filtered, so you can determine sort of how uh, steppy it is. So I'll take the filter all the way off. Then I'll add some filtering back in. We have noise. Uh, this is digital noise, so it's a lot like what the corrosion control does, uh, but this gets kind of interesting when you direct it at a filter. Uh, and then we have 
have an envelope follower, um, which we have another filter for, so we can sort of set the shape of the envelope follower. Right now I've got it maxed out, so as I play harder, it's actually cutting out my signal. But if I back this off a little bit, there's actually a nice sort of built-in compressor there. Uh, if we apply it again to the low-pass filter positively, uh, we can get kind of a, a low-pass gate feel. Uh, and then finally, there's uh, a ramp option. So one of the things that's different about this version compared to previous versions is that the stomp switches don't have dedicated ramping functions because you can reproduce any of those that you want with the ramp stomp switch. Um, and if you want to change that to a latching stomp switch, the ramp page is right here on number nine and this is in fact the stomp switch that controls it so if you wanted that to be latching that's where you would change that um, but we can use the the ramp to let's bring our filter frequency down a ramp speed, ramp time, so we can control how quickly it ramps from one position to another. I'm sort of holding on this, which makes it hard. Anyhow, you, you can control that. It can be quite long uh, or immediate if you set it to zero. So, uh, there's one last thing that I wanted to show off. And keep in mind, any of these can be routed to anything, so you can get really intricate with the modulation and um, the ways in which the, the sound can get kind of scuzzed up. Um, you know, so if I wanted to have sort of a phasery sound from the looped envelope on my filters, and then I wanted to use the the envelope follower to uh, control my volume and use the filter uh, random to control my uh, flutter amount. It's pretty doable. There's one other thing I wanted to show off, which is if you set the wow amount to zero, this is like an Easter egg, what happens is that the internal modulation for the delay line that goes to the wow amount is exchanged for the modulation bus. So this becomes a depth control for our modulation. And now we have this looped envelope going to 
Wow amount the mod button does nothing. Um, and I mostly did this because uh, we get more noise flutter if we set it to noise, but I really wanted it for the envelope follower vibrato. Um, That's the patch. You can blend in some vibrato or tremolo mm -hmm. 